again, folks. It's Chris Bezanoy or Chris B from CSB Security Inc. answering another one of our client questions. So I'm going to take a look. This question is about vaults uh, versus the secured storage space. So the question is: Is there any reason to keep the vault that we built now that the exemption now that the exemption has come out? So basically, what this client is asking is, you know, they've gone ahead and based their design on the ACMPR, which stated that you needed a compliant vault, whether it was level seven, level eight, level nine, level 10, whatever it was going to be, you had to be compliant with the ACMPR and the directive on how to build that vault and how to protect it. And so when that 56 exemption came out, basically stating, hey, you don't need a vault anymore. You just need a secured storage room. A lot of our clients came back and said, well, that's fantastic. I already built my vault. Well, that's great. I just spent $200,000 for no reason. Some of our clients are saying, oh boy, that is fantastic. I want to return my deposit on the vault that I've purchased. Some of our clients say, that's, that's awesome. I haven't built anything. I'm just gonna build four walls and a ceiling and call it a secured storage room. So I do talk about secured storage rooms a little bit more in depth in another video. Uh, I encourage you to watch them. It does apply to the ACMPR and somewhat to the new Cannabis Act and you'll need to know the differences between the two. But for this question specifically, the answer is, is there any reason to keep your vault? Now, from a Health Canada point of view, not really. They wouldn't have come out with a 56 exemption if they didn't realize that maybe the vaults were not needed necessarily. From a security best practices point of view, especially me being a security uh, consultant, I would say, well, yeah, of course the vault is fantastic. If you've already built it, it's a fantastic structure. Why wouldn't you want to protect the product that you are growing and cultivating and drying and packaging or extracting or whatever? Why wouldn't you want to protect that? Not to say that you would get broken into, not to say that vaults weren't a little bit overkill, but hey, if you've got it, you might as well use it. The challenge that you're going to have is a lot of people say, well, I don't want to have to abide by the directive. I don't want to attest to Health Canada all the devices inside of my vault. I don't want to have to do that all the time. What if a vibration detector goes down and all of a sudden Health Canada finds it as something wrong and you have an observation against you? That's a very valid point. Sometimes it is better to just reduce the amount of risk of Health Canada finding something wrong with your site, either before you get a license or even afterwards. Where the biggest advantage comes into play in keeping a vault, other than the security side of things, as in the best practice, you want to protect the most um, expensive thing that you can think of in your facility that somebody would want, but also you got to think of export and specifically GMP. Now I do talk about GPP and GMP in another video. Go ahead and watch it. There are some very good things that you should know. But to be GMP compliant, you have to abide by a certain amount of regulations that are sort of worldwide known. And one of those things is, if you want to accept any sort of product, if you want to export any sort of product, no matter where you are, you know, some countries do this differently, but you know, eGMP comes into mind. But the point being is that for anybody in Canada, if you want to be GMP certified to be able to export cannabis outside of Canada, into a European country that may require you to protect that product at all times, you may want to think about that vault. What better way to protect your product from any contamination or any silly buggers than to put it inside of a vault that is protected by a combination lock that will take hours to drill into, that security cleared staff or people that are high up in your chain of command have access to? The point being is that a vault is still a good thing to have. If you've built it, keep it. Yes, it has to be compliant. Yes, you'll have to abide by the regulations, but the benefits are you have a more secure product and potentially that'll help you be able to export outside of the country. Now on the flip side, a secured storage room is also a good thing. We are you know, recommending certain construction for these types of rooms. There are regulations out there that other governing bodies abide by for the construction of a secured storage space. But again, the question was based around the vault. If you've got one, keep it. If you're looking to build one, maybe rethink that. It's up to you. Remember the GMP thing I just mentioned? If you already have uh, purchased one and it's gonna be delivered and you can't return it, maybe construct it. 
it's entirely up to you. The point being is that under the Cannabis Act, and of course under the Exemption 56, you no longer need a vault, you can use a secured storage room. There are caveats with that. There are a lot of changes in the Cannabis Act with the secured storage room versus the ACMPR. That's another video, but keep the vault. Why not? You've got it and protect the product that you are producing. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow us. We answer a lot of questions. We talk about a lot of things in the ACMPR and New Cannabis Act world. Hopefully all of it is informative and you learn a lot from it. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.